Hi, my name is Nkenny, and I'm one of the developers of the Lambs Danger FSM, an AI enhancement mod for Arma 3. In this video, I'll be showcasing how the Zeus implementation of the modules work, and in fact, I'll be talking through each of these modules, saving only artillery for a separate video. This is also the second part of a trio of videos, which cover some of the core functionality of the mod in a in a sort of design developer diary type of manner as I usually do. Now while I'll be focused on Zeus, all of these modules are present and are called in the same sort of exact manner as you would in uh, Zeus. They have the same type of functionality. If you want to have a video focused on how they how to use them in Eden, I reference you to my previous video. Before I go in, I will also add that you can, of course, run these functions directly by script. And there's an example of this on this guy right here, uh, where he runs the task camp script directly on the unit like that. I won't do a video on that. I'll instead reference our wiki page, or you can read the descriptions directly from the functions on our GitHub. With that said, let's uh, delve into it and have a look at the different modules. Now, some of these will be familiar to you. I have done separate videos on all of them, but this is putting all of it to co collected. So as we can see, the task camp function kicked in on these guys. They are standing around and actually went to man this nearby uh, AA piece. What else is on the map? Um, you might have seen at the corner of your eyes some modules for civilian uh, ambient civilians. That's not part of the mod. That's part of vanilla. I, that's just part of the ambience of this uh, of this particular mission, which I used to showcase some of the um, some of the Zeus features, also in other in other examples. But um, enough about that. Let's um, let's get into it. So the Zeus modules have. Uh, three tabs configured on them. Uh, there is the configure group AI, configure long range radio and disabled unit AI. Uh, these things can be configured in Eden directly, which is why they don't have separate modules as such. But if I put down a fire team, I'll talk us through what the different things do. And starting really from, um, actually let me talk about the different categories first. So the Lambs Danger FSM core settings, uh, are just that they are core settings that affect the FSM functionality and again I referenced the previous video to understand the different distinction between the FSM and the module system then there's the search and the waypoint uh, modules now the search modules are grouped together because they work in the same unified manner that is they have a perfect knowledge of the general <laughs> location of the enemy and by default the player enemy so they are uh, meant to evoke or, or create a distinct type of mission whereas the danger waypoints are more general and also do not uh, have that sort of same hunting type pattern to them built into them so that this is the distinction between those two categories we might even make further subcategories in a future version. Currently we're at 2.4.4, uh, but the module and their, their use will remain the same. So uh, let's have a look at these um, core functions first. Configure group AI. I drop that on the unit and I can disable the group AI. Future versions will also have the ability to configure stuff here. Now disabling the group AI will simply uh, disable the sort of leadership brain of this unit. The, the leadership brain is responsible for such things as uh, causing the entire group to suppress a position, causing the entire group to flank and assault a position, uh, causing the entire group to hide from tanks if that unit has no uh, AT weapons, causing the same unit to hide from aircraft if that unit does not have any 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 uh, correct weapons, and so on. So this is a higher order type of um, oh, and also calling artillery. Come to think of it, so if you want a a simpler unit with more direct control, less autonomous unit, you can disable the group AI. 
like so. Uh, configure long range radio. Uh, what this does is that, uh, like, like it says, it toggles boosted communication range on the unit. Now all units by default have a built-in communications, ra uh, communications um, range. Uh, it can be configured on a per mission or even per server basis. Uh, and they will share information. It'll, there's no nothing reinforcements or anything like that associated with this. It's merely the sharing of information. And the initial range which everyone has access to is the shout range, which is 100 meters. Uh, that will be triggered on the first moment the unit enter combat. They will essentially shout out and anything within 100 meters will become aware of what's happening there, right? Uh, you can also configure their sort of personal radio range and this can be done on a faction basis so west east and independent this is by default 500 meters which means that a unit uh, once it's in combat and once it has time to submit the unit leader that is has time to submit a combat report he will send that information out to 500 meters and the accuracy of the shared information by default one uh, is, is, is the top level of information you can share out. He will, he will report that in and other units which are closer to this may act on that in various manners based on their range to the uh, target, the visibility of the target and so on. But by default there are no movement orders, reinforcement features, uh, attack commands or anything like that added to the, the info. This is purely information sharing in its current uh, implementation. There's also the option for backpack radios, and that is identical with the boosted range. And like the text here says, you can either just check this box, or you can actually equip them with a uh, backpack radio to have something physical seen. And it, it merely means that the unit will have a longer communication range where it will share information about the enemy's position. It is not integral to the uh, artillery system in any manner. You can also disable unit AI, and that disables the specific LAMB's FSM level AI on that unit. This is useful if you want to use that unit in a cutscene, or if you want to set somebody captive, or really just want to have full control of that unit and have it do nothing else than exactly what you want from it. So that's the, that's the, the system of, of, of LAMB's, um, the, the core functions, right? Now, here are uh, the three search modules, and I guess I could um, put put down three units. Should I put down three enemies? Yeah, I guess. Uh, so uh, my location is on top of this hill, like so. And if I put down, um, I'll be a bit generous with the distance there. I'll put down uh, some sentries. You will easily see the difference of implementation. Now each of them work on the same sort of principle. I apply it on the unit like this. I can toggle different things on it. Uh, a radius like that. I can set the, the radius they will search. I'll increase that just to make sure that it hits me. Uh, script interval. Uh, again, this is a end state function that is run on that unit right now, and you can actually configure how quickly that script will run, how quickly it will update the location of the uh, of the enemy, and uh, and 30 is is, uh, is is sufficient for that. Uh, this gets interesting as you can also use the group as center. That is the default pattern. Uh, we'll have a look at what that can do in a in a moment, and you can also set it up so it will actually target AI. Uh, initially, it would only target players, which is the main function of it. It is a way, these search modules are a way to put pressure on your players, right? Uh, but you, if you want to use it in a, in, a, in a more broad fashion, you can actually untoggle this and it will engage uh, at anything. Um, use the group as center. Uh, by default, the group will look out a thousand to two thousand meters from its location and try to find a player but you can also use the module itself as a center and then that module becomes a center from which the group will search out two thousand meters but let me put down uh, just a creep on uh, on that and we can use the other one on on the other so um i'll actually talk about yeah creep 
does what it sounds like. Uh, this unit will try to maneuver in such a manner as to get in an ambush position on a nearby player. It will read the nearby terrain and judge its stance based on that, also based on the distance to the player in fact. So this which is uh, very nice and open, they're going to go prone because they do not want to be spotted. And uh, as a few YouTube videos have shown us from uh, from other people, that can be quite uh, scary and also they're, they can be very difficult to spot when they act like that so this is a, a feature like that uh, we can see some debug text here on the bottom uh, that can of course be configured on this is just because uh, this is my my debugging uh, sort of um, uh, user again server options you can turn those off easily like that now those, those will stop hunt I again, same implementation. I put it on the units like that, very similar options. You notice a higher script interval. And this time I'll uncheck use group at center and we can have a look at the, the different behavior. So uh, what this will do is um, it will, uh, the, 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 the hunting pattern will uh, make the unit patrol around the closest player. Uh, again, none of these scripts impart accurate knowledge. It's not that they are, are fed um, sort of shared information about the AI uh, enemy, but they will believe that there is an enemy in that area. And the hunting group will uh, patrol around the, conce the, 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 um, the conceived enemy and get closer and closer and closer uh, until hopefully they'll stumble into them. So that's what the uh, what the um, uh, hunting group like that uh, uh, does. You notice that they move much faster than the other group, and that's because they have a fair distance to go. But their default uh, movement stance is, is safe with their weapons uh, uh, not ready, uh, as you can see right there. And finally, there is the task push, which again works the same way. If I try to put it somewhere else, it will fail. If I put it on the unit, I I'll get it. And what task rush does is what you expect, namely that unit will rush heedless of dangers toward the closest enemy. They'll move into buildings, can be quite scare, uh, scary. It is po still possible to suppress them, but they are much less sus susceptible for it because they will keep moving. Now, does this prevent the sort of uh, uh, Sometimes the AI will stop immediately and sees an enemy and try to uh, to fire. Will they fire on the move while Stalino style? Unfortunately, they will not. That's actually some uh, uh, vanilla behavior, deep core engine type stuff, which I simply don't have access to. Uh, it is conceivably possible that by very, very clever weapon configuration, it's possible to work around that. I don't think it is. My experiments have not shown that, but you know, you can live and learn. But those are three of the um, um, the initial modules here, creep, hunt, and rush. Uh, again, end state type modules that have very distinct, very, very dire direct and sometimes dramatic effect on how the enemy will hunt you. As you can see, the hunters, uh, creepers, they have not even closed in yet. The hunters are much closer and the rushers are, yeah, they're, they're, they're moving at their best ability. So that's how that system works. Now for the general waypoints um, it gets uh, interesting as well. So we can use this um, valley down here to demonstrate two of them. So I'll put down uh, again just sentries. You can do so with uh, pretty much any size unit of course but um, uh, those, those some experimentation is a good idea. Uh, what um, the the first thing we'll see here is the dynamic target. Now the dynamic target is not present in Eden because you don't need it. The dynamic target is a way of of simulating the presence of a uh, of a of a module um, like you would have in in uh, in the. Um, in the Eden implementation. So I'll put down a dynamic 
a module like that I can have any number of them of course and you can see they get a unique name as as well I can have any number of them uh, active and if I do task assault and I, I can do so in two manners I can put it directly on the unit and in this case you will see that it suggests a center dynamic target alpha which we just placed up here uh, or I can put it uh, right next to and in this case it will actually find the closest unit organize them in a list like that alpha 1 4 is of course this one uh, and now that module will serve as the closest uh, target so the dynamic task it uh, the trigger uh, and this will be useful in a, in a matter I'll show you just in a moment so as task assault task retreat uh, it's a combination function uh, and it simply means uh, is, a, is a way to get the AI to actually just move uh, it will continuously make the AI forget nearby enemy units and try to rush force their way in to that location that is given and in this case I'll use the um, the dynamic target to demonstrate an interesting feature there so I'll put this on on that unit uh, I'll notice the script intervals are quite fast completion threshold uh, when the unit gets within this many meters it'll consider the task assault completed so 12 meters is, is fine I'll put that down on this one and on the other one I'll set them as unit is fleeing and I bet you can already guess what they what these these things mean notice that this guy is rushing these guys are playing some sort of fleeing animation and what I can do with the dynamic target is of course move it and you can see these guys are now responding to that they're actually hunting to it now I could achieve the same effect by using a module but in this case I have two groups right so I, I wanted to have those two groups actually hunt towards that um, that dynamic target in that manner and you can actually see the fleers are are having it and once they reach their destination this guy is within 12 meters he stops well he should stop they lower they get their weapons back and so on in fact I put it in a kind of awkward place because the uphill AI is not the best at it once they get there uh, the unit will reset and will now be ready for uh, future taskings like that um, actually just move these down there so uh, task assault task retreat has a has a, a very clear cut and a direct sort of end state to it task camp is um, we've actually already seen it up here but I'll, we can uh, can demonstrate again I can put it on or uh, uh, at the side of it puts the center on itself or the dynamic target I can set up the radius where it will look for um, the turrets to man, uh, buildings to uh, to enter. Uh, in fact, if I group these to get a bit, a few more, and let's. Um, Ready for order. Just like so. I'll put it down. I will not set up a dynamic patrol this time around. I'll just put put it down and we can now see that they will move in such a manner as to just stand around. And one of these guys actually entered the turret. In previous versions there was a chance that they would ignore the turret. I've actually removed or we've removed that in, in, in this version uh, just to make the function more dependable, more um, more easy to use. Uh, I could, of course, have used the dynamic target as a center, and I can, I can, I can show that in uh, in, in just a moment as well. Uh, this is useful if you want to just showcase somebody just standing around. They'll be triggered if uh, there's shooting nearby, uh, or if they enter a sort of danger mode. Now, the trigger for that is not immediately because it's actually based on a sentry uh, waypoint that needs to sort of qualify or, or personal danger to the group but uh, when it works I find that uh, th this is a, a is a very cool way of simulating actually just 
group standing around or staying in camp and not really being ready to engage Terminator style with incoming uh, incoming players. Put some tents and some sleeping gear here, and that this would have been a, a, a fairly interesting uh, camp like that. Uh, can I, of course, extend the functionality of this by um, some of these settings. Um, I'll enter teleport units, and I'll also set up dynamic patrol. And what we'll see now is the majority of the group are standing around in a sort of circle here. Uh, some of them have actually entered buildings. This is slightly sort of randomized. And because we checked dynamic patrol, we can see that there is now a group which is moving around like so. Uh, now, it's well noting that adding dynamic patrol will actually split the group in two. So we now actually have two logical groups that will behave independently. So if you were to reset this task camp, these two members are not automatically going to join this group. That's a limitation of the uh, of the implementation. Uh, but in fact, let's skip down to the very bottom now that we've sort of talked about it, task reset, just to show that it is actually possible to get them back online. Now task reset is the, it's the nuclear option, right? Uh, like I talked about in the introduction video, or the first video here, uh, the modules are intended to be end states in a sense. They're meant to be easy shorthands for mission makers just to get units on the ground, have them behave in a convincing manner, in a single manner, uh, and then it's p possible to, of course, work around that, such as by using the task reset function, but that is sort of going beyond and above what the implementation is. Now, we are working to clarify this. We're looking into ways to making the transitions even smoother, but it is, mission makers must simply understand that we are running functions on these. These are very heavy handed in a sense to get them to, 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 to behave in this, this particular, uh, particular manner. Possibly the task patrol is, because it only adds a waypoint like that, it's probably the easiest one to skip, uh, on skip out of, like so. Now this unit is ready. If I try to do that with this one, Understood. You know, nothing. Roger that. Understood. Nothing. Nothing would happen simply because this group is locked in a function. It is locked in an end state. However, the key to get out of it is, of course, task reset. And if I enable that on the group, you see that they will pop out of their animations. They will reset and be ready to act Copy and that. move. Uh, you can check the documentation to get an idea of of, of, uh, of, of of which of them works how. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, which of them uh, uh, works how? But it's easier just to uh, just to experiment a, a bit with it. Uh, I would say this guy. Uh, this is actually a, a honest to god bug, which we'll have to fix for the next version. Uh, he was theoretically. In the static weapon but um hmm. happy days thank you guys uh, this is the sort of heavy-handed task reset and it's also worth noting that uh, every time I reset the group like that I actually create a new group uh, even though it inherits the old call sign it is actually a new group in a logical fashion if you don't know what that means uh, read up on the uh, Arma 3 documentation a bit more, uh, Rajat Mission Maker. Um, in any case, that is Task Camp. That's how it works, some of the settings involved with it, and uh, perhaps some ideas on how to use it. And again, uh, they you can't give them orders immediately, but if an enemy comes by, obviously they'll pop out of camp mode, and they will try to engage that enemy to the best of their ability. Uh, I suggest you play around with it. Uh, it's, it's as easy as all that. Um, now for garrisoning, it is pretty much what it says. Um, I put it on the unit like so. Um, we get a bunch of options here. Uh, I can set the radius around that unit, 50 meters. I can set the exit trigger. I'll return to that. Uh, sort position by height. Uh, I only wanted to get the top positions in buildings. Teleport units, we saw that on task garrison, it will move the units instantaneously, quite convenient. And dynamic patrol, that's actually the same thing as task camp. You can get them to patrol within the AO like that. Now for task garrison, the unique thing is setting up an exit trigger, of which there 
uh, are a few options there. It's random and all. Uh, these will hit. We'll talk about the fired name, fired and hit. These are identical with the um, event handlers of the same name. Uh, fired near an enemy fires a weapon near that unit. The unit fires its own weapon or the unit is hit. Default is random, so it picks one of these. It can also have all of them or it can have none of them. Uh, the default is one of these events will uh, will uh, re-enable movement on that unit. That's, uh, that's the key. So if I activate it, you can see that they will move into uh, nearby buildings. And the exit condition is the trigger that makes them leave that building. Uh, you can configure it just as shown. And it's nice to have a, a function that will actually make the AI remain within a building. Uh, even when the enemy comes close cl nearby, it gets you to a sort of a Stalingrad. Every building needs to be checked. They're not just always rushing towards you at the uh, willy nilly uh, like that. Uh, in fact, here's an interesting example. You can see this guy failed to enter a building. Uh, the reason he did that is actually because of pathfinding. This building with that bush around it is a bit awkward for the AI, so it sometimes struggles to get in there. Now, because it struggled to get in there, it is actually not given a uh, uh, an, an, an order and will move. Uh, well, ideally, we will pro uh, actually it will continue to move back there. But it, if it fails over a long time, it will actually um, stop itself and then. Uh, be ready for action. So we can see that the, the physical waypoint is here. This is what it considers to, to be the spot it is defending. So once one of these condition triggers, it takes damage, it fires its own weapon or an enemy fires its weapon within, I think, 70 meters of it, then these guys will uh, rush out. And it is, of course, individual for each of the units uh, if you do not um, configure it manually yourself. And in fact, we can we can do that. Let's have another example of it. Uh, so I put down Standing one of these squads. I will put down a garrison and uh, let me do it next to it. And you can see it picks up that squad. I will set the exit trigger to be hit. Uh, we'll teleport unit and we'll also have a dynamic patrol. And boom, they moved into space. And you see a two man patrol uh, has randomly set up a course here and it's called a dynamic patrol but it is because it is truly dynamic once this unit has gotten to its end state it will get a new patrol again within the area uh, of the garrison and it's a fairly close patrol as you can see because they're essentially close uh, patrolling around the buildings again the as with the camp the I can give these the as way. much waypoints as I like they're not going to leave them uh, the way to get them to leave is either by a task reset or by, um, uh, by them actually being uh, triggered, uh, their, their exit conditions being triggered. Or if you are a, mis uh, a coding savvy person, you should know that what's actually happening on them to get, keep them is disable AI path. So if I enable uh, AI path on, on, on them, they'll actually leave. But that won't be a full uh, uh, a, a, a full uh, a reset and may come with other um, I'm doing all units right now uh, that, that, that comes with other other um, uh, other costs right so so I wouldn't be a bit careful uh, in, in doing that uh, finally we have uh, task patrol task patrol I've of course uh, showcased before but we can Happily do so uh, again. Um, it is uh, simply an easy way to set up a patrol. Oh, I skipped one. I'll, I'll go back to CQB. I thought it was a few. Anyway, task patrol, uh, range, number of waypoints for them, or whether or not there will be a dynamic patrol pattern. Uh, easy peasy stuff like that. Uh, like so. There's also task CQB, which uh, remains somewhat experimental. Um, it isn't one uh, it, it isn't honestly a a um, 
a, a function that's suitable for all, all missions. It's definitely not something I would do every time I want them to clear buildings. The AI will, after all, with Danger FSM, clear buildings a bit by themselves. But it's definitely a good one if uh, the uh, enemy or AI greatly outnumber the player and you want them to look into each and every building. Uh, then it's a pretty cool cool system for it. So I put down another dynamic target. That won't be necessary. That's not always necessary. You can, of course, put it on the unit like so. And I'll, I'll select dynamic target. That's Foxtrot over there. And uh, here we go. Now what the Task CQB does, is, much like it um, indicates, is it will have the unit st stack up on these buildings and then um, move into them to try to clear. They will move through each and every of the configured building locations in um, in the uh, in the uh, uh, oh, of Standing of by. that building. Ready. The script interval is 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 quite. Uh, slow at 20 21 seconds and that's just to give them time to move around uh, sometimes you get these awkward stacks like that the first entry point into a building is um, uh, stacked up like that I talk about that a bit more in the in the in the video that deals with the task CQB script um, uh, alone uh, it might look a bit weird like this but it looks very different when you're <laughs> number one being hunted by them and they will also break out of that sort of behavior if there is an enemy nearby they'll be much more aggressive in in, in uh, prosecuting that enemy contact uh, this dynamic point is serves now as the center for their cqb effort so uh, the default is 50 meters so we spawn them in over here they pick the closest building to them from there which was this one and now they're just moving on they will not recheck a building unless it's being uh, it's being held by a, uh, a, a known enemy and they will simply just move Ready. through each Ready. and every building and, and and clear them in in order now what the dynamic uh, target can do which is of course interesting is that you can move it like so uh, which means that uh, they will now pick a building within 50 meters of that which hasn't been secured by uh, uh, another unit on their team and uh, they'll pick the closest one and they will move to that as we actually see right now so this can be uh, I mean you could put down a couple of uh, if you're evil evil Zeus you could put down a couple of, uh, of uh, CQ being groups <laughs> like this they can all feed off the same uh, the same uh, dynamic uh, point and they will actually check buildings uh, methodically around there uh, in, in, in the manner you're actually seeing uh, seeing right now and as the players move you could move the dynamic uh, the, 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 the dynamic target so that's the sort of use you could do uh, you could you could obviously do the same thing in in Eden um, with the module or, or even just calling the script directly uh, I refer you to the uh, to the documentation or the function itself to uh, to see how how that will work uh, but that's just a, a small um, small idea there so anyway uh, as you can see there are clearing these buildings we have actually two groups stacked on the same building right now possibly there was a uh, there was there was one of these um, buildings that was uh, that was that was unchecked and they will probably uh, keep moving on towards the same buildings there's no shared intelligence as such it's more mm, just based on distance and whether or not that building has been been uh, been uh, been secured uh, in fact now that this one has been uh, apparently thoroughly cleared I expect these two units to yeah be moving over to the slow one right here so that's uh, pretty much uh, how these modules work uh, I've talked a bit about uh, each of them in in, in, in imp implementation there's obviously some uh, some cool stuff you could um, you could you could do there uh, I've seen uh, you know putting the group over here uh, but uh, s setting up a, uh, a tasks or uh, they, get, they get them moving in here to to patrol or rush or assault uh, there's uh, th there's really interesting uh, interesting stuff um, uh, going on here uh, keep in mind like I said in the in intro video that these modules are meant to be end states 
uh, until they run out by the, by themselves, such as task camp when it's triggered or task assault in the case when it reaches its uh, its actual um, its actual uh, uh, location. Then that unit is sort of of, of fresh. Uh, there's immediately no feedback on that. The Zeus or mission maker will simply have to be uh, aware of it. Uh, I will also add: do not underestimate the uh, default vanilla AI. It is much better than people give it credit for. I find, uh, in terms of pathfinding and understanding uh, how to engage in co in combat, you don't always need to use these uh, Russian and uh, rush modules. Uh, sometimes a uh, just a, a a move with a with a, a seek and destroy waypoint is more than sufficient, especially combined with the core FSM features, which of course are. Uh, much more powerful than vanilla, and I do add uh, much more in more intelligence. So don't don't get too enthralled with these modules, as as, as what I'm saying. Uh, but instead, use them for uh, direct effect to um, enable telling the type of story you want to tell as a Zeus or a mission maker. And that has been a uh, more in-depth look at these uh, modules. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions. Leave them in the comments, or uh, better yet, join our Discord to uh, to ask us directly. There's uh, a, a fairly substantial knowledge base right there, uh, both in the team and uh, quite a few uh, people outside the team who were um, very helpful there. So thanks, everyone, and thank you for watching. That's it for me.